And welcome to another edition of our treatment of the International Sunday School lesson. Today's lesson is entitled, Called to Mutual Acceptance. And it's taken from Romans the 11th chapter, verses 11 through 24. It's for May the 19th, 2019, spring quarter, lesson number 12. Well, a little background information. This is a continuation of uh, some of the themes that we've been talking about the last few weeks uh, with the placement of Jews and Gentiles within the church. And uh, this is taken from the book of Romans. And we had uh, mentioned that the uh, church at Rome was a pretty good size, for the time, was a pretty good sized church and had both Jews and Gentiles in within that particular church. And Paul has uh, been contrasting uh, the experience, the contrast, the differences and the similarities between uh, Jews and Gentiles prior to coming into uh, the church, prior to being saved. And one of the things that Paul had brought out that both Jews and Gentiles have a moral compass that they can follow and knew that, um, that sin is in the world and that sin is wrong and people should not be sinning. So both Jews and Gentiles have that moral compass to know uh, when they sin and what is sin and can be convinced that every for everyone has sinned. And also, too, Paul has been discussing how that both Jews and Gentiles, if they accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, that they are on their way to heaven and that salvation is available freely both to Jews and Gentiles. And then after salvation has occurred, there's no difference between Jews and Gentiles within the house of God. Okay, well, let's go into today's lesson. Romans 11, 11 and 12. So I ask, did they stumble in order that they may, might fall? By no means. Rather, through their trespass, salvation has come to the Gentiles, so as to make Israel jealous. Now, if their trespass means riches for the world, and if their failure means riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their full inclusion mean? Now, Paul had just now been talking about how that uh, the as a nation, the Jews had rejected Jesus as the Messiah, and because of that, uh, the they had lost salvation because of that. Now, there are people who will uh, try to make out that there are other ways of getting to heaven other than Jesus Christ. There is absolutely no way to get to heaven without accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. And the people prior to Jesus coming into this world who were saved were saved because they were looking forward to this coming Messiah. Jesus is the central, central method mechanism, way, door into heaven. Now, you can be a good person, you can be a good moral person, but if you do not accept Jesus as your personal Savior, 
You are on your way to hell. I don't care what is politically correct for people to say. I don't care uh, who says what. The Bible is real clear about this. If you do not accept Jesus as a personal Savior, you are not going to go to heaven. Okay? And that was what Paul was talking about right before these verses. So we know that as we are reading the Gospels, how that the officials at the time that Jesus, uh, right before the crucifixion and the arrest of Jesus, that the officials at the time had rejected Jesus as the Messiah. And that is what uh, led up to them uh, making the deal with Judas Iscariot, dragging Jesus before the Roman government, uh, had taking part in uh, seeing that he was nailed to the cross, and that uh, in the rejection of Jesus as the Messiah by the synagogues of the day and the persecution of the Christians by the rabbis and the synagogues of the day was that rejection of Jesus as the Messiah. And Paul had been talking about that up to this point. Okay? Now, there is going to come a time when the Jews will once again turn back and they will accept Jesus as the Messiah, but that is in the future tense. Okay? So, this entire little section of Scripture one of the major themes through it is how we should act, those of us who are Gentiles, how we should act and treat the Jews who are around us. Because there have been huge mistakes made. Huge mistakes made about how to treat the Jews in our day. And it's important for us to acknowledge that the truth that we've been given came through Jewish hands. And it's important for us to recognize that Jesus was a Jew. He was a descendant of David. He was a descendant of Judah. He was a descendant of Abraham. And any type of anti-Semitic garbage that people get involved in, any type of uh, being prejudiced to Jewish people, at its extreme core, is wrong. And let me be real clear about something. If you are mean to Jewish people and you go about and, and spread anti-Semitic garbage about Jewish people, the curses that are in the Bible about doing that kind of thing still apply under no circumstances should any of us Gentile Christians no circumstance where we should ever participate in any type of anti-Semitism 
because more of our Bible is Old Testament than New Testament. And we got that Old Testament. Every last person who wrote anything in the Old Testament, with exception of maybe the book of Job, who knows, but every other book was written by Jewish people. The majority of the New Testament was written by Jewish Christians. The early Christian church on the day of Pentecost at its very inception was all Jewish people. It wasn't until a little bit later did the Gentiles began to come into the church. So absolutely under no circumstance should any Christian ever be silent against anti-Semitism. Anytime anybody is anti-Semitic, we need to be the first person to take up for our Jewish friends. We should be the very, very, very first person. Okay? So, this is one of the things that we that uh, Paul is talking about here is how Jews and Gentiles within the house of God need to view each other. Okay? Now, 13 and 14. Now, I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. So Paul basically is telling them that uh, he's wanting to build up the one of his ulterior motives of uh, building up the Gentiles in the church and to minister to them is in the hopes that it might make some of his fellow kinsmen jealous. And we should be building people up uh, to make the world jealous to where they want to be a Christian. Okay? That's one of the reasons why it is so wrong. Um, it is so wrong to be disruptive and tear down inside the church and get out and talk about the church and carry tales and that kind of thing is because you're tearing down uh, that that you would want to build up that people would want to be part of, okay? And that's what, in a way, what Paul is saying here. He's wanting his fellow kinsmen to be part of this great uh, move of God that's going on. Okay, 15 and 16. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? If the dough offered as first fruits is holy, so is the whole lump. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. So what Paul is talking about here is when uh, people are, ex or when, when, the, uh, when the Jews... Uh, finally fully accept Jesus as Messiah, that um, then uh, salvation will have its fullness. It will be uh, the time when Jesus sets up his kingdom and everything. Okay, now continuing on. 17 and 20. But if some of the branches were broken off and you, although a wild olive shoot, were grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing root of the olive tree. Do not be arrogant toward the branches. If you are, remember it is not you who support the root, but the root that supports you. Then you will be saved. Branches were broken off 
so that I might be grafted in. This is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief, but you stand fast through faith. So do not become proud, but fear. Now that's an important, there, there are a lot of things that are bound up in these verses. Uh, first off, and again, let me reiterate something that I say often uh, on YouTube and in, on the, my radio ministry, is that we should resist pride in ourselves at every opportunity, every time it comes up. It is, no matter if it's pride from uh, physical looks, pride from money, pride from education, pride from intelligence, uh, pride from physical strength, uh, pride from position, pride from prestige, and just as importantly, pride from living a clean, moral life and being part of a particular church. We should especially be sensitive about becoming prideful and arrogant over spiritual matters. It, you can, that your downfall can be just as closely linked and can be triggered just as easily from being prideful of something spiritual you've done and being arrogant about some spiritual thing about you as it can from uh, being rich and famous. Because all pride and arrogance is sin. Okay? Now, it's an important concept for us to understand that we Gentiles, those of us who are Gentiles, did not replace Jews. There is a um, misconception and a misidea that has been came up multiple times throughout church history that tries to get people to believe that Gentiles replaced the Jews, that the church replaced the Jews, and that the Jewish blessings that are in the Old Testament no longer apply, and that we have replaced the Jewish people. That is not the case, and if there was any doubt in your mind about that, these Three verses are clear about that. There is this olive tree that is the Jewish people, and there were unbelief in sinfulness at the time that uh, Jesus came into the world, and branches were broken off from that olive tree. And there were other branches grafted in, not replacing the olive tree, but being grafted into the olive tree. Okay? And then... It's important for us to understand that we're not supporting we're not supporting the Jewish people they are supporting us it is the old testament that is the foundation 
for the New Testament and you read the Old Testament and when you look at who Jesus was and you accept him as the Messiah, the Savior of the world, it's because of those prophecies that are in the Old Testament being fulfilled in the New Testament. Okay? And this business about, uh, about how that uh, the church has replaced the Jewish people and that none of the blessings apply to the Jewish people is just a bold-faced lie. It does not work that way. Okay? Because we Gentiles were grafted in and the olive tree supports the grafted in branches. The branches are not supporting that olive tree. Okay? Now, continuing on, 11 and 22. For if God did not spare the natural branches, neither will he spare you. Note then the kindness and severity of God, the severity toward those who have fallen, but God's kindness to you, provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. Now, let's stop, everyone stop and ponder this idea about obedience. What you do matters. What you say matters. What you believe matters. Okay? And if you turn your back on God, if He cut out the natural branches out of that olive tree and grafted you in, if you turn your back on God, if the church turns his back on God, he'll take us out too. And we all need to be aware of that. Okay? Uh, 23 and 24. And even they, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in. For God has the power to graft them in again. For if you were cut off from what it is by nature, a wild olive tree, and grafted, contrary to nature, into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these, the natural branches, be grafted back into their own olive tree? Now, let me be perfectly clear in plain about this, what I'm about ready to say. If anybody turns to Christ, salvation is there for them. Okay? So, if somebody had been a rabbi and had preached and taught against Jesus being the Messiah their entire life. And then they turn to Jesus and seek Him. Uh, he will accept them back and accept them and embrace them and salvation is available. Okay? Now, concluding thoughts. Don't be spreading hate. That's one of the big things that, that I want to really emphasize, especially in the culture and time that we live in. Do not under any circumstance give in to any type of anti-Semitic garbage. If you 
attack the Jewish people. There is a curse that is on you. It is that simple. Okay? Um, we should treat people with respect and love and kindness. Okay? The other thing, too, is that even though some of I, I, people I really care about who are Jewish... And I've got enormous respect for their integrity and their morality. But the bottom line is this. If you do not accept Jesus as your personal Savior, you are not going to heaven. And with everything in me, let me beg and plead with anybody in the sound of my voice who has not accepted Jesus as their personal Savior to accept Him as their personal Savior. Well, friends, good Lord willing, I'll be back with you next weekend. <music>